Hi guys, and welcome to In the Kitchen with Janine. To all my subscribers and my friends, hello. I'm at it again, I'm baking. And today I'm gonna do apple bread, which I feel is more like a cake. So I did a lot of preparation and that's to help you because nobody wants to see me do all of this stuff on camera. There's just no way. And there's a lot of preparation, but if you do it like me and you count out your stuff and set up, it's a breeze. It's a one bowl baking, dish. I wrote down my instructions because again, you know I don't bake. It's not my recipe. Okay, so let's see. Apple cake. The first thing is, and I don't like to use scales, but on this one it required 180 grams. It simply said a, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, and I used, I like this flour, King Arthur, all-purpose flour. And to be sure, I said, let me try it just for the flour content, because if you don't get that right, that's where baking's off, I feel. It could be a little bit more dense or not right. So anyways, I did the flour, measured out 180 grams, which is one and a half cups. So I'm gonna be done with that because that's all I'm measuring. I'm not doing this. And I'm, as like many of you, I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to either. Okay, like I said before, here go the glasses because I can't see and read my recipe without them. Okay. We did the one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Then it's a half a cup of white sugar. Let's get that out. These things I'm going to do on camera for you. Here's my one half. This is one half, but I don't like the shape of this when I'm baking. I just trust my old-fashioned. And sometimes I'm not worried if the sugar's a little off. I don't go to the top of the ledge there like that, you know, because a little less sugar is never going to hurt my recipe, I feel. That's where you have a little bit more room if you were off a teaspoon or two on your sugar. No worries. Now that's the sugar white sugar. Now it's also a half a cup of brown sugar and I'm going to have to try to get through my half a cup of brown sugar without laughing. First, let me get this in measure properly because this is you can use dark or light, I believe. I read somewhere that you can interchange them. It just changes. Let me do it over here, guys, because it's a little bit messy because I have to get my knife and try to level this because you know brown sugar is like that. What was I saying? Someone had said in the many things I've read about baking and cookies and all that, you can you can interchange them, okay? It just changes the color of your baked goods. Like see if I was doing chocolate chip cookies, I'd go for the lighter sugar because it's the color of the chocolate chip that we all know. But sometimes you see them darker. And here now see, I packed it on kind of lightly, not crazy. I'm not going to go crazy because it's brown sugar. Again, like I said, if it's a little sweeter, it ain't hurting nobody. There you go. So that's that. Now, the funny thing is, I'm going to tell you the truth. The reason I didn't use my brown sugar today, because I have some. I have some and I have a tip to keep it fresh. This is obviously not fresh. This is the brown sugar beer. <laughs> okay, he's alive, but the sugar's dead. The sugar's dead because... I have this in here for about three years, and honestly, in all in all honesty, I could use it if I wanted to unpack it by my hand, but the whole purpose of telling you and showing you, this has to get washed and be gone, I have to replenish my brown, because I like to keep both on hand. The moral of the story is, this is a sugar bear that keeps your sugar from getting hard, the brown, light, or dark. You buy this little guy, you can get them on Amazon. You've seen them, you know where they used to have them all the time? Bed Bath & Beyond, and they're adorable. They come in different shapes, little, uh, there's a sugar frog, sugar bear. It's um, terracotta, and for some reason, terracotta keeps it from sticking. So that's that, he needs a little wash too. And what you do is you rinse them under cold water before you put them in the sugar or something, then you dry it, and it holds that moisture within the terracotta. I'm not a scientist, enough of that, okay? And there was another tip I saw somewhere online that if you didn't want to use the bear, a marshmallow, a large marshmallow put in the container will do the same. I don't know. We'll see as I continue to bake. But for now, we got our flour and we got our sugar in, brown and white. Now we're going to do three quarters of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is fancy, but let me say three quarters of a teaspoon. Mmm, three quarters would be this three times. Mm. Or three quarters. Let me do let me do the teaspoon. One teaspoon. And mm, three quarters of it would be almost full. I'm I'm more comfortable with that guys. Because I really don't know. I love cinnamon, so again, if I did too much cinnamon here, it's not gonna hurt me. I absolutely I absolutely love cinnamon. Okay. 
So there's that. I don't stress the little ingredients in a baking recipe. You can't. I can't. And we'll see the results. If the results are good, you'll follow mine exact. If not, you'll be inspired and do your own. We'll do something different. Okay. A half a teaspoon of baking soda. Where's my baking soda? Okay, here's that. Another thing. This I make sure. The baking soda and powder have to be precise. So it's a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And this I'm going to get my little knife. Where's my little knife? Here's one. See? I did prepare ahead. I'm going to level it off. That's the baking soda. Half a teaspoon. Okay, put that aside. Now it's also a half a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon. Good thing I'm looking and reading. That's another thing. I won't wing the recipe, even my own, because you forget. You do. There'll be that one little ingredient. You say, oh, shit. I forgot to put the baking powder or something. It's such a small amount. A quarter teaspoon of baking powder. We need a quarter here now. That's the smallest. All right. And they have that handy little leveler right inside the container for you. I always load it up. Well, see, sometimes it works. I think my knife is better today. I don't know why, but. Oh. You know, I'm never happy with this when I measured the baking, baking soda, because I think, isn't this the, the riser in a, in a dish? And I want that to always be enough. All right, there you go. Better be enough. So I want it fluffy. And the great thing and the reason I'm doing this and sticking kind of with these loaf pans is I love the one bowl method. And a quarter teaspoon of, see, I didn't even write it down, but I remembered the last ingredient. A quarter teaspoon of freshly grated, I love this little jar, freshly grated nutmeg. And my new grade, I just want to say, like I'm not promoting anybody's products, but this was only $8. It comes in its own little thing. Look at that. Target, Target. I love it. I love it. And you could probably grade into here. I'm not going to. I'm going to I'm gonna do my own little measurement here. I'm going to wing this. It says a quarter teaspoon, and I'm going to kind of finally say what I think on top of the white sugar is a quarter teaspoon. And nutmeg, oh my goodness, it's such a fragrance, so strong. I'm not a big fan of it, so I like to watch how much goes in, you know, in my apple dishes, pies, whatever. No, no, no. Let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna call it okay at that. I don't like a lot. So I'm sure I put less than a quarter teaspoon is what I'm saying. I just, I'm not cool with too much of it. I smell it here above the bowl. It goes to show you. But you know, some people love nutmeg. So if you want, put the quarter teaspoon. Then that's it. Then what it calls for is to mix it all up. These are the dry ingredients. You're probably wondering where the apples are. They've been done and separate on the side. Let me mix this all well, all the dry ingredients now. Get everything nice and incorporated. And then come the wet ingredients. There's gonna come some butter, there's gonna be some eggs. Okay, and guess what? I've been talking and I hope you hear me and I'm saying, oh my goodness, my audio, I'm gonna have to speak loud and clear because I don't have my mic on. So you watched me do them and now I'm gonna talk louder and clearer to make sure and certain that you hear me. My bad, but I can't go backwards. I can't re-talk through a video. We've tried that in the past. It doesn't work because Vinny said, you don't shut up. There's no gaps to fill in or speak in. So I'm gonna have to just speak loud so my Samsung my, uh, no, my iPhone. Hopefully the iPhone picks up my audio good enough. I've done it before. Like I go back to old school days when I didn't have a uh, microphone. And I got some views. I got some good people on there watching. So it'll work out. I just gotta speak loud and clear. And now is the part where important stuff is coming. And you will always have the recipe in the description. So if you didn't hear something clear, say, what'd she say? You got it in the description, okay guys? No worries there. All right, now, after all the dry ingredients and mix, then comes the wet, and the apples are actually last. The, no, the walnuts are, okay. Now, it is, where's my butter? Here, I microwaved it. Melt one 
full st half uh, half a cup is eight tablespoons. There's one full half cup melted in the microwave. Put that all in. Okay, let me get my spoon. Two large eggs, two large eggs room temperature. I have those here. And a good tip is if you didn't have them room temperature and ready, put them in a cup or a glass and run them over faucet, hot faucet water for about two minutes and then crack them into a bowl. You'll see, you can touch them with your finger. They'll be warm. Okay. There's that. And it's kind of dry, don't be afraid. It's gonna be a little dry of a mix. Okay, but once we get our apples in here, they'll do their thing and they'll release moisture. Now, here's the thing about the apples. Let me move some stuff aside. The apples are one whole large apple grated. You'll see I've grated it. I put it in here to keep them from browning, but they browned in any event. And half of another apple diced. Okay, so you have the combination like a zucchini bread from the shredded part, and then you have a little bit of texture from the unshredded part of the apple. But in totality, I'll put it in the directions. It's about one and a half apples, one large, and yeah, two large apples, but one and a half. Okay, so let's see, get that in. It's gonna add moisture right away to our batter. And then the last thing that's going to go in here is one quarter. Oh, let me see. I kept it to show you how far down I grated it, right to the core. Peel a large one first, grate it, and then half of another one chopped, or three quarters if you like a lot of apple. Okay? I got to get another spoon here to clean that one off. Almost forgot, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, that's that. Let's continue to mix. Yeah, and there she's coming together now. Coming together now. Apples are releasing their water. The mixture is getting softer. Everything's incorporating. And I just want to make a quick mention out there. As I always say, I'm going to share my family. I just want to say hello to my older sister, Debbie. Hello. Who thinks I don't miss her. Who doesn't think I think of her. So I want to say a special hello. I love you and I will see you soon. Okay. This is coming on nicely. Let me get my pan while it sits one more second for me. I'm going to let that sit a second. Move this over to here. Have a sip of coffee. Okay, now we got the loaf pan. Where is my spray? See? Get ready on the ready. I already have the oven preheating at 350. Okay, I feel I'm missing something. I am. Half a cup of chopped walnuts. You can chop them further. I didn't bother because I have them in my cupboard chopped all the time. Vinny eats them in his cereal every morning practically. Okay, so I'm gonna add that. It's turning out to look quite delicious and fall is around the corner guys, so I'm getting ready. I do do an apple pie, I'm gonna put that recipe up. And I'm gonna start to share more little tips about my family members. Last night I did a hello uh, in the fettuccine recipe that said hi to Milo. Milo is my other sister's Stephanie, my sister Stephanie's grandson. He's my great nephew. His dad is David, my sister's younger son. So I'm gonna be mentioning my family here and there. Some are shy, some are out there and boisterous and there's a good mix in my fam. And I do have some stories. I have a very funny story about Stephanie. Uh, so funny, in fact, it's from our childhood. I had to ask her if it would be okay to do on camera and once she gave me her blessing, I built a recipe around it. When I do my Puerto Rican red beans, I'll save that, that story for that particular recipe because it's quite funny to me. But I'm gonna be sharing that and more. Because I did say storytelling in my intro that I like to tell them, I'm not, I don't have, you know, novels of stories. I do it under my bed, but 
not in my real life. I have some good memories and funny things, and I'm going to share them. That's the, the family sharing part. All right, that's it, guys. I don't want to overmix it because I think I am. Let me spray a bit here. All right. I only really concern myself with the bottom because I could always edge around, and I've had experience with that. So she goes in here. It's a nice, just a regular loaf pan. And I think the tip is that I learned and heard, if you use a smaller pan, it changes the cooking time by about five minutes or so, and it will rise higher. So I'm gonna put this in an oven, let's say for an hour, but I'm gonna start checking it at 50 minutes, okay? And then I will we'll have the absolute accurate end time in the description recipe for you. No worries, okay? So that's that. Oh gosh, it's either my eyeglasses are foggy or it's already raining out there. Okay, see, it doesn't look like it's very high. Another thing I might do, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit, I'm gonna make it some cinnamon sugar. Let me see if I can do that quickly. I wanna make a little cinnamon sugar and a few more, a few more walnuts. One second guys, let me get those walnuts. I want to try something. I know I shouldn't be experimenting today with a new recipe, but I'm curious. I got to see what I can do here. It wouldn't be my own if I didn't do this. And we only had to make cinnamon sugar, I think. Who am I kidding? I never made it. I think it's just white sugar and cinnamon together. Okay. I think I want a little more cinnamon. I do love it. I love cinnamon. And it is very good for you. Very good for you. Okay. I'm gonna do that a little bit. See? Cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on top, a little extra, a little extra something, something. And I'm gonna get a few more. This is looking good, guys. This really is, not for nothing. I'm starting to think I could bake. On the thing I could bake. All right, let me get some of these and we'll crush it more. All right, let's see. See, they're big, but I want them smaller to go on the top. Break that in two. Alrighty, I think it's pretty and I hope in about an hour guys, I'll be back and you'll see a fabulous looking, I don't need these anymore, you'll see a fabulous looking apple cake, I hope. I baked it, I baked it, I'm so happy. It's still in the pan guys. I didn't wanna take it out because I can't do it on camera. It requires a little delicateness because for some reason this nonstick pan has a hot spot on the bottom that will pull a piece off and I don't wanna ruin it. I wanna get this beautiful. The bottom's still very, very warm, hot to my hand. The walnuts, beautiful, okay. And that brown sugar cinnamon crisped up. They taste a little flake. It's absolutely delicious. I'm going to get this onto here and I'm going to slice a piece to show you how moist it is. It'll be in the thumbnail. I'll put all the ingredients and directions in the description for you. But I'm a happy camper. I'm starting to think I could bake. And I'm sorry about the audio before, but I did a test on listening to the first half of this video and I sounded quite clear and loud. Let me know what you think. This is with my mic on now. And I think there's a little bit of an echo without the microphone. We're actually looking into a better one because I'm, this is annoying. I forget to put it on. I don't want it on top, whatever. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. To anyone who subscribes, thank you. And to all of you who stayed with me and subscribers, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video.